In this quick tip tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up a MIDI keyboard within Studio One 7.2. Now here I've created a new song and I brought in an Impact Drum Machine, one of the native devices that comes with Studio One. And then on the second instrument track here, I've got a Hive by Yuhi. Now I've got my MIDI keyboard connected via USB, but whenever I play the keys, we're not getting any sound from our Hive. If I select our top track for the drum machine, I can use the keys or the pad, but we're not seeing any activity and we're not getting any audio from our drum machine. So if you just got your MIDI keyboard and you've connected with USB, but you're not getting any sound from Studio One, let's go ahead and take a look at setting that up. Now I can press control and comma on the PC or command and comma on the Mac. Now generally this is gonna take us to the general tab if you've just installed Studio One, but we wanna to come to the external devices. And then here we can go about adding and managing our external controllers. Now let's come to the bottom right hand corner and cancel out of here. Now we'll click on the mix button in the bottom right hand corner, just to show that if we have the console open and we have the instruments panel showing, we can see we have external devices. I can click on the plus here and that's gonna take us directly to the add device window. But I'll again control and comma. We'll come to external devices and then here at the very bottom we have add. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now here we have that window that was showed when we click on the plus button within the mix console. And again for this tutorial we're just setting up the basic keyboard use. Now to the left we see a bunch of manufacturers so you can come here and try to find your keyboard you want to be a little bit careful here because some of these can be older. So for instance, again, I'm using the MPK Mini, but the one that they have here is a bit older, so it doesn't have full functionality. When I try to set up the other faders or the knobs and some other controls, extended functionality on the device. So let's just go ahead and this is gonna work with any keyboard that you have. So we'll come up to the top and select new keyboard. Now the manufacturer, I'm gonna go ahead and name this Akai. Let's tab down. I'll call this MPK Mini. This is the MK3. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave all channels selected. We can toggle that on and off by clicking the all or selecting and deselecting specific channels. Now we want to come to the receive from and then we can see our MPK Mini 3 here. Now, I didn't need to install any extra drivers for this. However, if you are setting up a more complex controller that has faders and knobs that you'd like to integrate with Studio One, be sure to first check the website of the manufacturer of your controller because they may have specific instructions or drivers that you can download that will help to automatically integrate your controller with Studio One. But again, for right now, we're just setting up a keyboard. So we have new keyboard. We've given it a name, the model. We have all MIDI channels. We've selected it from the receive from area here. Let's go ahead and click on OK. We can see it listed here in the main window. Let's click on OK. Now our impact is selected. I'm gonna press some pads on the MPK. Okay, so we can see that this is being triggered. We can hear that and we can see the pads lighting up. We also see a meter here with activity coming in from the pads. Now I can also use the keys, the black or white keys. Bit. To trigger the impact as well. Now what about our hive? Let's just click once and switch over to it. Now I'm gonna use the keys. Okay, so we can hear that we now have audio coming from our hive. We can see activity here on the instrument track when I press a key. We have that meter that's moving up and down. Also take note that down in our transport, we have this MIDI and we have the old school looking MIDI connector. This arrow to the left, when I press a key or a pad, we can see that that's lighting up. So if you are trying to troubleshoot your MIDI connection, just first I would take a look at this first arrow and if this is not lighting up when you press a key or pad on your controller, you may want to check your cable 
unplug it, reseed it, to be sure that it's being recognized by your operating system. This is your first point to look at if you're not triggering your devices after you've set up your device uh, within Studio One. Now, if this is lighting up, then we can also take a look here. We can see that the MIDI information is making it to our instrument track, okay? So these are just areas to look at when you're troubleshooting your MIDI information. Now, if I click on the word MIDI, then this is gonna open up our MIDI monitor, and I can actually press a key on my MPK Mini, and I can see what specific information is coming in for that key. So we can see note on my initial press, and note off when I release, and we can see that this is for C3 or middle C. Now we can see the channel is coming in on channel one, and it's coming in from our MPK Mini 3. So this could be another area to help you troubleshoot uh, if you're having problems triggering your virtual instruments. Let's go ahead and close this window out. Now a couple other things to be aware of is that we have routing controls for our instrument tracks and virtual instruments. So with the Hive selected, we could see this is our output destination. So this is where the incoming MIDI data is going to be sent to our Hive. So when I press a key on my MIDI controller, we can hear our Hive playing back because it's being sent there. Now, if I were to click on this and change it to our impact, and now when I play my controller, and let's actually open up our impact. And we'll switch to bank B. Okay, so I'm still on that same original instrument track, but since I changed this to the impact, that MIDI information coming in is now being directed here. If I were to switch this back to the hive, now that MIDI information is coming back to our hive. And just the same as you can imagine, if I come up to our top track, which is by default being sent to our impact, I can choose the hive here. Okay, so just be aware of that of these routing, you generally don't want to alter these unless you're doing something very specific. Now, second area to be aware of is where we're looking for information coming from our MIDI controllers. So by default, this is gonna be on all inputs. And I think this is a pretty safe setting, especially if you're a beginner. If you have two or three MIDI controllers, when you have the set to all inputs, it's gonna look at for information coming in from all two, three, or four of your external controllers. If I wanted this to specifically look for information coming from my MPK Mini, then I can click here and change this to the MPK Mini. Man. And we can hear that that's triggering. Now, if I were to press caps lock on my computer QWERTY keyboard to open up the virtual QWERTY keyboard, now when I press the keys on my computer keyboard, we can see that these are lighting up. We're not getting any sound from our impact because we're specifically telling it to look for information coming from the MPK Mini. But if I click on this, and we could put that to QWERTY keyboard. Okay, now we are triggering this device because we're telling it to specifically look for information coming from our QWERTY keyboard. Now, I can also put this back to all inputs. Then I can use The virtual QWERTY keyboard will caps lock to close that out, or I can use the keys and pads on my MPK Mini or the external MIDI keyboard. So again, just to reiterate, if you're having any issues and you need to troubleshoot, be aware you have these routing controls. This is where your MIDI information is being directed to. The top field and then the bottom one is where we're going to be receiving our MIDI information from. Now at the very bottom, if we click on configure, this is going to take us to our external devices tab within the preferences menu, uh, where we took a look at earlier for managing everything here. Now, if at any point you'd like to remove an external controller that you've added, you can select it by clicking once. Now you can click on the edit to make changes, but we want to look at removing it. So next to edit, we have remove. If I click on that, we're getting a little warning. I want to go ahead and say yes. We can see that that's been taken out from our external devices. 
Okay, so this has been a somewhat quick look at adding a MIDI keyboard within Studio One 7. I hope this has been useful. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training with me over Zoom, I do provide that. So you can find more information by checking out the pinned comment below or checking out the description area of this video. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.